Hello you guys, welcome to any vlog. It is Tuesday, I was in the office yesterday so I didn't start a new vlog and again, it's a very hectic time. I've got a visit at home, my mom-in-law is here with us for a month so there's probably not gonna actually be a lot of vlogging for me so I'm just trying to vlog whenever I can. Um, here, I washed my hair two days ago and I'm about to like I'm gonna get braided today my um, hairstylist is gonna come to braid my hair so I was just I blow dried it a little bit this morning just to stretch it out um, so that she can like be able to open up lines nicely but yeah I washed it I treated it and now it's ready to be braided so um so whenever she comes here she will braid my hair but yeah this is what the hair situation is probably by tomorrow or tonight you'll see me with like a different hairstyle but yeah i made some oolong tea which is actually cold now And I wanted to talk a little bit about books that I have open, guys. I've got so many books open because I think I'm in a reading slump and I honestly don't know what I need right now in terms of reading. But there are two books that I am actively reading this week. One of them I started yesterday, so maybe let me start with the ones that are open that I would like to finish <laughs> still. And uh, it's the last day of April, guys. At I don't even know if I'll get if I'll get there. But first one, I still have Red Ink by Angela McCullar. I have not picked this book up in like three weeks. I'm still on page one or three. I paused it when I felt like it was going like way too slow for my liking i didn't feel any like progression and i don't know i just i didn't have patience anymore so i'm like let me put it down before i get annoyed which i don't want to be annoyed by this book so i want to love it <laughs> um or at least at the very least enjoy it but yeah and then another book that i opened is the book of azrael by Ember V. Nicole. First things first, I was listening to this on audio, but I think I'm going to return my credit for this audio because I really think the audio book is ruining the experience for me. Um, I'm just not enjoying the audio book, but also I feel like the story is a little bit all over the place. And I just wanted to move along and audiobook is the best way to help me move along but it's making me hate the book <laughs> at the same time um, and the one moment where I actually just read with my eyes I felt like it was better but I think the other issue I'm having with this book is that I'm really not enjoying Liam's perspective I really really do not enjoy Liam's perspective I don't like the back and forth that um, we going through in terms of his perspective like we keep going back in time it's like centuries ago that he's having all of these memories and you can see that he's clearly struggling with PTSD so there's a lot of that going on and there's like Liam a few hours prior now I'm like I don't even remember a few hours prior to what so I don't know like I'm just 
he is ruining the experience for me and the audiobook is ruining the experience for me because I feel like the narrator is not doing a good job at the um, at the male characters I really hate it when she does the male characters so yeah I've got that open and by the way it's a book about I guess gods and monsters book one so gods and the monsters are kind of like war warring and they've been enemies for a long time and the monsters that they particularly talk about is I don't know what they call her they also also I think the other thing that I really don't like is the terms that they've chosen for to name their lands they're very difficult to remember or even pronounce like I, I honestly can't even remember right now um, and I don't know I don't know if there's even gonna be a romance between Sam Kael who is a god and he's called the wor a world ender the world ender because he can literally end and create new worlds he is supposedly unkillable which means now he's just like alive for centuries and centuries and centuries and obviously he gets lonely and then throughout the centuries he's been hunting these i want i don't know what they're called i honestly don't know what they're called now but then whatever this oh igmorathans igmorathans he has been hunting igmorathans all his life and he thought that they were all killed but then he realized that the igmorathans are coming back and they are coming back because of this guy called Caden, who is like the king of all other monsters. And Caden created um, or made Diana an Igmorthan when Diana, I guess, was dying or something like that, and tried to make Diana's sister an Igmorthan, but that failed. But Igmorthans are very powerful, they can shape shift, they wield fire. Like, this book sounds cool. Like, if you look at the synopsis it sounds like a good time and Caden is kind of like not keeping Diana's sister hostage but but since he saved Diana's sister from dying like centuries ago Diana has kind of been indebted to him and works as his second as his assassin but also as his lover and i don't think that's what she wants but i feel like diana and sam kyle are going to end up probably in some romance so i'm taking a break from this one because i'm really starting to hate it <laughs> because of the um number one audiobook which i'm letting go of as well as the Liam's narration it's all over the place and I really don't like that I really don't like that um, a book that I started yesterday via audio and I'm like oh, I think I think this is where I need to be in terms of my reading is the reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson I don't want to read the synopsis but essentially the premise of this is that Rachel Price disappeared 16 years ago and the last time she was seen she was with her 22 month old baby Annabelle who goes by Belle right now so it's been like 16 years later so Belle is almost 18 so Rachel took uh, Annabelle to the mall they ran some errands whatever but when people look or when the police looked at the camera footage she was never seen leaving the mall but her car was found abandoned at some other location with the baby in the car and this guy found them and she's been missing ever since her body was never found so from what i remember of this book obviously it says the reappearance of rachel price so rachel price comes back at some point but nobody has been able to figure out what happened so I'm at the part of the story or the story begins with Annabelle who has been raised by her father for the last 16 years they have agreed to do a documentary about the um, the disappearance of 
Rachel Price. The documentary is called, is it called The Reappearance or The Disappearance? I don't know, but they're doing a documentary and they're getting like, there is the family involved to basically give memories of who Rachel was and kind of like, try to figure out maybe what happened because nobody has been able to solve this mystery but yeah the writing style in here really great i am enjoying the audiobook a lot i love the main character's char uh, personality she's quite funny as well and i i'm having a good time i'm having a good time reading this one i'm only on page 34 and i don't know there's I'm already starting to question things, right? Because obviously the husband was a suspect because the husband was always a, always a suspect, but he had an alibi and it doesn't make sense for him to have done it. But his mother-in-law, who is Rachel Price's mother, believes that he is responsible. And Belle and obviously the father does not have a good relationship with the mother-in-law because of what she believes. So the mother-in-law was not around when Belle was growing up and there's also a suspicion that she might have died but because the book is called The Reappearance we know or I think I know that she did not die unless she reappears as a dead person um, but yeah and there is a scene where they're watching like homemade videos and they're talking about Belle's um aunt who was pregnant but leona this timeline of her pregnancy and when she gave birth doesn't add up i don't know i feel like the reason that came up is is important and i, I don't know but i can't wait to figure this out i am currently reading and enjoying this book so so much okay, and then the other book that i've got open on the kindle i just love this so much you guys <laughs> i can never get over showing off um the back of my kindle whenever i want to talk about a book that i'm reading but i'm trying to read more from my kindle because i do have a couple of books on here that i want to read so i've got the chalk man by cj tudor i think at this point i'm maybe like 48 pages 43 pages no not 43 pages um 43 percent into the book which is uh, page 173 i'm actually really enjoying this and i'm finding it so easy to read from the kindle especially like when i'm really tired or if we're driving or if i'm in bed and i want to read but i don't want to have the light on this is the best deal for me so yeah this has been like the best way for me to read lately and with me struggling to read my physical books I've literally just been picking up my Kindle to read this book every day even if it's just a few pages that I'm reading but I'm enjoying this one so in this book we are following what's this guy's name Ed is his name Ed <laughs> I think his name is Ed but this story takes place in two timelines in 1985 where Ed is about 10 or 12 years old and then in 2016 so it keeps jumping between these timelines because there's certain things that are happening that are kind of like bringing back memories of what happened in the past so ed has this group of friends who used to obviously play together they had their bicycle used to ride together and one day when they went to an amusement park an incident happened where one of the machines um, broke and this girl got really really hurt and ed was like standing right there and this new teacher who just came into town who has albinism kind of like helped this girl to kind of like keep her alive or whatever while the paramedics come and i mentioned that he has albinism because it is mentioned in the story and it's the reason why he is called the chalk man so we know that he's the chalk man right so that happened and ed believes that that day at the amusement park with this girl got into this very bad accident 
is when a lot of things went like downside for him and his friends because a lot of things did start happening i can't even mention them because i don't know how any of these things connect because i don't know if there's like a serial killer element to this i don't know the synopsis of the story let me just say that i have no idea what the synopsis of the story is and i'm fine like that so i have no idea if we're dealing with a serial killer situation i don't even know the trope okay i don't know but all i know is that this man this teacher who came into town he's also very good at art so he is like an artist during his spare time and he likes to draw people and he starts giving eddie an idea of you know me and my friends we used to use chalk to leave each other like um secret messages and you know he plants that idea in, in ed's head so ed's go ed Eddie goes and tells his friends, oh, this will be cool. Like, if we want to go meet at the park, then you could just draw a circle to say park and just like stick people to indicate that we want to meet at the park or whatever message you can leave. And they dedicated like a single chalk to each one of them. There's four of them and everybody gets a different color. So depending on the color of the chalk drawing, you know who left the message, right? Until other chalk messages start like coming up all around town but they are a different color they are all in white and it's almost like not a premonition of what's going to happen but almost like an explanation of the bad things that are starting to happen and i can't even mention those things but safe to say i'm really really intrigued by the story and i'm really intrigued to continue and finish the story because I don't I want to know what's going on and right now I don't know I don't know I'm 43% in and I have no idea I don't know what the trope is I don't know what to expect but there's like some mental health issues mentioned in here because Eddie's dad um, died of Alzheimer's and Eddie I think he's in his 40s now he's also like starting to maybe feel some of those effects but also Eddie sees things okay he sees things that are not there and he reacts so I don't know if he's sleepwalking and if he's having episodes where he's just like hallucinating or if this is just there's a gothic element in the story where there's actually ghosts <laughs> and it is the only one who can see them. I don't know guys, I don't know. But when I get more information and I keep reading, I will come back and tell you guys all of my thoughts on this book. So yeah, this book and the reappearance of Rachel Price is what I am concentrating on this week. These are my main reads. I feel like I will keep it to thrillers until I can get myself back into that fantasy because I don't like to open more than one fantasy at a time but I feel like I might have to because I have book two and three of the Broken Earth trilogy that I got from the library and I haven't even opened them and I need to really read them so I think I'm just gonna park the book of Azrael for now until I can come back to it kind of like same thing that I did with Legendborn because Legendborn also the audiobook Look guys, it's loud today. The audiobook of Legendborn ruined the experience for me and I didn't enjoy it as much as everybody did. So yeah, that's the update. I'm gonna go make myself a cup of coffee now and I'm gonna make uh, some muesli and have my breakfast.
Hi you guys. Um, I hope you're good. It has been about five days since I spoke to you. The last time I spoke to you I was saying that I'm gonna get my hair done. So I did, obviously, <laughs> five days ago. But I haven't picked up my camera since. So this is what the hair looks like. It is Sunday. It's been a hectic week. And I'm just trying to like catch up to household things. So I'm like busy with laundry and cleaning and all that. But while I'm doing that, I am listening to a very interesting book. Um, I think my copy's in the bedroom, but I'm listening to The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Black. No, no, not Holly Black, Holly Jackson. Holly Black writes um, that book, or fantasy. Um, Holly Jackson is the mystery thriller author of probably mostly thrillers of um, a, go a good girl's guide to murder so i'm listening to that book and it's so good there's been a turn of events not even a plot twist but it's a turn of events so obviously the story is following the reappearance of somebody who has disappeared a long time ago so rachel price disappeared 16 years ago and everybody looked for him some people thought that her husband actually murdered her and then 16 years later as the husband and her daughter Belle has decided to kind of like do this documentary about her disappearance she, she reappears so then the documentary gets renamed to the reappearance of Rachel Price but things are not as they seem and Belle seems to be like the only person who's picking up that there's something weird um, first of all there were some inconsistencies in Rachel's story of how she reappeared where the version that she told her father is slightly different from the version that she told her and I don't think Rachel realized the slip up but Belle is like the only one who's figuring these things out and she like a few more things start like not coming together and I don't know things are weird but we got to a point where something else just happened and I'm just like I don't know but everything has to do with Rachel I don't trust Rachel I don't think that she was really captured for those 16 years I think that she left for some reason and now she came back to try and re-enter herself into this family and she's ruining everything because you can see how some of her actions are like getting in between certain relationships and I'm just like I don't trust Rachel and uh, I mean it's getting tense I'm getting nervous because I don't know what's going to what's going to happen but I am listening to the audiobook on uh, audible and wherever I can I try to pick up the book as well but yeah it's 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 a nice read it's a nice book to listen to and also there's another character called ash who is the camera assistant of this guy who's doing the documentary and i love the banter between him and Belle. that is very nice to listen to but things are just not coming together things are a little bit weird and We'll see. We'll see. Um, I have a bunch of things to do today. I did mention that I'm doing laundry and I'm cleaning up the house. I need to remove my nails because I have a nail appointment tomorrow. Um, a nail technician is going to come and get my nails done. So I need to take this, these ones off. So I have to do that today. I have to cook. And yeah, hopefully I can finish editing my vlog i also wanted to record my may tbr i'm not gonna do a tbr jar this month because i think i have books that i know i want to read and i don't want to leave that to chance plus i still haven't started my library books and they do in about 10 days so i need to get started on those so as soon as i'm done with the reappearance of rachel price I probably would want to pick up The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. I also am still reading The Chalk Man on my Kindle by C.J. Tudor. <sighs> my husband is so disruptive in the background. But I'm <laughs> reading The Chalk Man on my Kindle. But I paused that right now because 
I'm already reading kind of like a mystery book and I tried to pick it up this morning I was like all I was thinking about was Rachel Price so I was like let me not confuse myself let me just stop um, reading from my Kindle for a little bit until I'm done with Rachel Price so when I'm done with that one I will definitely pick up um, NK Jemison as a physical book because I do want to add that to my DVR and then I will continue with my Kindle read in between so we have a family trip coming up and I want to grab some books with me so I need to decide which books I'm gonna take I might want to grab the Fury take that with um, I feel like I need another fantasy I don't know if I should read the eternal ones and just finish up that series or what did I have on my I definitely I definitely want to pick up a middle grade book I want to take that with so I want a middle grade I want a thriller and I want a fantasy oh baby NK Jemison <laughs> maybe I should just okay I'm not gonna take the eternal ones I'm just gonna grab the last two books in uh, the Broken Earth trilogy by NK Jemison I'll pick up Nevermore I'll pick up the Fury as the books that I'm gonna travel with and obviously I'll have my Kindle as well I think that's the plan um, and then when we come back from the trip I'll probably then want to read other fantasy books because there's books that have been on my TBR for the last two months that I haven't been getting to because I've been almost like in a reading slump for maybe those two months and I really want to get to them before I start to randomly pick my TBR again at these books that I, I, I want to read and finish so that is the plan I will speak to you guys later if I don't come back and show you other footage of me doing other things so we'll see oh I made myself this delicious delicious um, serving of uh, matcha latte and I've added the roasted hazelnut syrup in it it is delicious but yeah I will see you guys later I actually like this, this box doesn't have anything anymore but I've placed it here I think because I wanted to take some footage <laughs> but I actually think I like it sitting there like as a decorative piece for my shelf um, here's the bookshelf it's getting full it's already full see I've got these two stacks as well um, I've got stack one and stack two of all the new books on my like that I received in the last two to three weeks and I already have a book haul video that I recorded some time ago I'm still yet to to edit so now I was like should I record another book haul <laughs> I don't know but I'm feeling like I might want to maybe sh show off these books in this vlog I think that's gonna be what I do um, yeah that's gonna be I, I think I'm gonna do that because I've got not too many I'm gonna have too many book haul videos for YouTube but I need to really work on getting the vlogs out so I need to get back to my editing so yeah that is the plan I will speak to you guys later okay let's go through my recent book haul I will start with the books that I have recently purchased um, all of these are from bargain books so firstly I've got these infinite threads by Tahira Mafi which is the second book in these woven kingdom because I recently received all the twisted glory from um jonathan ball publisher so i received this last month so i was missing book two and when i saw that it was on sale i was just like perfect because i didn't have this copy so now i've got the complete complete trilogy i actually like these um colors what i hate is that this book here it's slightly taller than the rest or slightly bigger than the rest I don't know why but I think they said heart-wrenching third book but I don't know if it's the last book in the series 
because it doesn't specify how many books are going to be there but at least i've got the first three and i can at least um start reading this book maybe sometime this year and then i've got the dragons the giant the women by wayati moore which is a memoir of family war and peace i've never read anything from wayati moore but I've heard really amazing things from my friends who read this sort of um, stories and have read from this author before. Very, very thin book. Um, one that will be a very quick read is about 248 pages, so really nice and short. And then I also got the 100 Wells of Salaga by Aisha Haruna Atta. And this book is published by Kasaba cassava republic and i got this one for 69 rands i've also heard really really good things about this one also a very nice and short book i like that um a lot of south african not south african but a lot of african literature tends to be like very short but very like straight to the point which i really enjoy this is 231 pages so i think i might want to maybe prioritize reading these books some before the end of the year because they're nice and short and i keep saying that i really want to get back to reading african literature my preferred subgenre of african literature is historical fiction i remember that when i was getting back into reading and i read a lot of that i did really enjoy it but i did fall off um, my african literature maybe because of the amount of trauma that is usually captured into the books it makes it very difficult for me to like want to pick those books up okay next i've got a book that was sent to me by Wordsworth Books. They sent me the third book in um, the Shadow, wait, 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 A Darker Shade of Magic series by V.E. Schraub, which I've heard amazing things about. So this is the last book in the series. I was missing this one when I want to do a body read of the whole series. So I can't wait to get into this one with her. And I like that. It is complete we can read finish you know get into the next um thing because i really still want to finish a couple of series this year and um, i've only done that with one so far with um the crescent city series well i'm up to date and the next one that's on my radar is the broken earth trilogy by k jameson i want to finish that i want to finish um the the first era of the miss Bond trilogy by brandon sanderson and of course the schwab as well as the atlas six uh, series or trilogy by Olivia Blake so I've got a couple of uh, series if I can finish those ones I think I'll be very happy okay next books I've got are from Jonathan Ball Publishers they sent me a middle grade that looking forward to uh, it's called the land of lost things by John Connolly and the Daily Mail says it's an epic and compelling journey can't wait to read this one I read the synopsis and was really interested is about an eight-year-old girl who is lying comatose following a car accident and then her mother goes and sit by her bedside reads her a fairy story and i don't know if they magically get transported into this fairy story and i, I don't know i don't know if maybe her it's, it will help her child get out of this coma but I don't know i'm looking forward to this but they promise some magical elements in this book and i'm looking forward to it the next one i have is a mystery and probably maybe a thriller i don't know if this is for if it's ya yeah, this is ya because they talk about uh scholarship pupils so it is called the four and this one is by ellie keel and i can't wait to read this one it says one secret could destroy them all and this is why it's it's like something something in here is gonna be so nice oh now i'm thinking should i read the fury or should i read the four or should i like take 
which book should I take with me on this trip? Uh, but it says we were always the four from our very first day at high realms the four scholarship pupils outsiders in a world of power and privilege it would have made our lives a lot easier if marta had simply pushed guinevere out of our bedroom window that day certainly it would have been tragic she would have died instantly but marta didn't push her then or if you choose to believe me at any other time if she had all of what we went through would have not happened doesn't this sound so good i can't wait to read this one but looking forward to the four and then lastly they sent me a very beautiful sounds like just the feel and the sound of the cover is also so nice i love it this reminds me of wayward as well i really loved the um arc cover this is an arc by the way it's called the silent the silence factory and is by bridget collins and it is releasing in this month it's releasing in may 2024 absolutely beautiful 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 book there's the other side and it's about i think a man who is trying to kind of like run away from his yeah henry dreams of silence and then he meets this fascinating mysterious gentleman who sells just that precious silk that can drown out the clamor of the world and everything henry is so desperate to escape but the question is why why does henry want to escape we don't know but yep um and then from penguin random house i've got it came in this really nice package that box over there um let me try to zoom into the box that penguin box that one it came into that box and they sent me the eternal ones uh by the Minifuna. this is the final book in the gilded one series this will actually be another series that i complete which is great and i do want to pick this one up really soon um this came with a note from penguin random um, penguin books ya book club it also came with a printout of the map of otera which i think is really beautiful and then stunning bookmark as well so looking forward to getting into the third book and uh, finishing this one I feel like I feel like me and the ladies have read all two books or maybe one of us somebody I don't know who would need to catch up but I think I want to suggest a book club read for the eternal ones actually I think I think that's gonna be a good idea um, another book that they sent me that I'm really excited for is the familiars by Lee Bardugo this is Lee Bardugo's recent release and I haven't even I only read the shadow why do I keep saying it? what is the name of that book shadow and bone I read shadow and bone by Lee Bardugo but I think I may I did myself a disservice by watching the TV series before I read the book because it wasn't like how the series went and that was a bit annoying and disappointing for me so I kind of dropped off finishing off the series but I do want to go back to finish but then since um, she's got a new release, I was like, this is a great way for me to get back into Lee Bardugo and slowly work myself back into um, her backlist. So thank you so much, Penguin. And then lastly, I've got a stack from Pan Macmillan. Um, they sent me the Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. This is one, two, three, four, five. Book five in the Folk of the air series so the first trilogy is the cruel prince the wicked king the queen of nothing and then we got the stolen air which i have up there and the prisoner's throne my issue is it seems like this is all part of like one series and i don't think i can pick up the stolen air without reading the cruel prince series first but if i can and i wouldn't miss too much please let me know because i don't think i'm really that interested in reading the cruel prince 
unless maybe I must find an audiobook to read that and catch up on those first few books because I don't think I want to buy them and own them but I am interested in reading this these two new books and I don't want to not enjoy the book to its full potential because I don't know the backstory so somebody please let me know in the comments down below if you think that I need to have read The Cruel Prince, The Cru A Wicked King and The Queen of Nothing before getting into the Stolen Air um, series but yeah I've got that and then they sent me um, the Thing with Zola by Zibu Sutole, another South African and African book that I want to read before the end of this year. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. I think this should also, oh no, this one can't be a book club read because a lot of the, the other ladies have already read it, but I haven't picked up these books yet. So I am looking forward to picking them up soon. And then lastly, they sent me James and this is by Percival Everett and Anne Pratchett said it is funny and horrifying, brilliant and riveting. Who should read this book? Every single person in the country. And this is a slave story. So this is about a man who was enslaved and he overheard that he was going to be sold to a new owner and essentially be separated from his wife and child but then he goes and runs away so I don't know if he's running away with the wife and child or just by himself which also he didn't solve the problem in my eyes but um, this is a historical uh, fiction novel and I'm not gonna say I'm too excited because I'm never really excited about slave stories but I am looking forward to one day picking up the story and reading it and seeing what it's about. At least it's not very long, so hopefully it's not also too painful for me to pick up and read because that's usually my issue when it comes to these um, slave related stories. I usually just shy away from even, you know, picking it up. But yeah, thank you so much to Penguin Random House, Pan McMillan, Words with Books, and Jonathan Paul Publishers for sending me all of these books. Can't wait to read them. Now that I've spoken and shown you guys these books, I can actually start finding a place for them to live, which is going to be a very difficult task for me <laughs> because I don't have space. I don't have space. But yeah, um, I'm going to get back to doing what I was doing in the house and yeah we'll catch up again later hi guys it is Monday <laughs> it's about to hit five o'clock I'm taking a little bit of a break from work to cook dinner then I'll be back at it again because I've got a whole bunch of work to do um, Tomorrow is my last day of work for the week because I will be on leave from Wednesday as um, we're traveling with the family. But I finished reading The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. I am giving it a four star rating because it was good. It was good. The intrigue was good. I found myself not really wanting to pick up any other book except for this one which is great which is great um but i really enjoyed it i enjoyed the characterization i enjoyed our main character Belle, in which we heard basically like the perspective from her and i enjoyed her relationship with her cousin um carter as well as ash i really love their banter all the way to the end and there's a scene that just made me want to like cry and sob because it was so sad but it was beautiful and it was a good read it was a very enjoyable read a good mystery didn't really figure things out but i don't think i really wanted to figure things out i just wanted to play it out the way that the author intended and yeah i'm done with the book i'm still thinking about it um i'm still thinking that there's one character that i did not like and now i'm like forced to like her but i still don't because a part of me is just like no <laughs> a part of me is like no but yeah i think i think she wrote it really well the writing style was really nice 
the plot was really nice i did not expect some of the the some of the things that unfolded i did not expect those things to happen but yeah um i'm done with the book i've got new nails the color in this the lighting here is not good so i think the colors are coming out the way but yeah i uh, i'm done with this i think next i want to pick up the obelisk gate by mk jemison and in terms of thrillers i should probably like honestly i should probably come back to red ink just so that i can finish it because we have a new book for our book club oopsie that's my memory card and we are reading the read dance stalker for book club so i should actually start red ink so that i can be on par because <laughs> currently i'm not so i think i should open or continue with this and then um in terms of the kindle i still have the chalkman by cj tudor that i'm busy reading i haven't picked this one up since i properly got into the reappearance of rachel price because my brain only wanted to consume that story and i gave it exactly what it needed so yeah let me go make some dinner oh gosh i've got a meeting at seven um i'm gonna go quickly make some dinner i'm gonna make some chicken stir fry uh with some noodles and that's it i don't want to make anything complicated because i still have a very long night ahead of me i've got packing to do um this just this just a lot okay but yeah i'll catch up with you guys whenever i can catch up with you guys but for now toodles hi you guys it is a Tuesday morning in front of my laptop because uh, work day is about to start. I have my bra my hair like braided because I'm gonna put it in hot water to, to reactivate the curls. But it's Tuesday, which means it's the last day of my work day for this week because we will be traveling today but there's still so much to do and things to sort out before that so it's gonna be a very very hectic day for me and this might be literally the only time that i get to speak to you guys but hold on oh i'm looking for <laughs> some vaseline for my lips but anyway I don't know where it is. I stopped by um, Starbucks this morning to get a mocha frappuccino, which is actually quite delicious. Um, I just finished that. Ah, oh, guys, <laughs> it's a lot. But I actually wanted to come here and say hello and um, show you the books that I am taking with me um, on this trip will be gone today's Tuesday so we're traveling today we'll arrive tomorrow and then um, we'll be back on Sunday so I've got what Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday I've got five days of reading um, because I am planning on reading while we travel as well so I've got five physical books that I think I'm gonna take with me. I wanted to take more but I don't think I'll be able to read more. I, don't, I probably won't finish these five either but I just wanted some options. So the first two books that I'm taking with me is The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This is a library um, book that I borrowed that is due to be returned in seven days time so I'm trying to get through to it and then also the Stone Sky which is book three in the Broken Earth trilogy so both these books are library books and I need to return them. I have another library book um, by Lady Taylor, Strange the Dreamer but I don't think I'll get to it this time around so I'll return it and then when I 
because because I took six weeks I borrowed the books for six weeks I won't be able to take it out again so I will leave it for these six weeks I'll take it in the next round um, but I definitely want to finish these two I got the audiobook of uh, the obelisk gate on on audible so I started listening to that today and it is so freaking good the writing style the writing of NK Jemison is good it's so good it's amazing like I love even just listening to it and I think she narrates um, the book I can't double check for you now because I have no idea where my phone is but she narrates the book um, another book that I have with me is Nevermore um, the Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Tadson. I thought this would be a nice quick read to read while we travel. It's a middle grade, it will go by quite fast. So that is what my hope is for this book. And then I've got Red Ink by Angela McCullough because I want to try and finish this book. We are reading The Redance Stalker for the Fully Book Sprints book club for the months of May and June but I need to have finished this before I get into that so that's the plan and then the last book last physical book that I'm adding oh no this book is damaged um that I'm taking with me because I think I'm in my mystery thriller era and that's kind of like what's taking me out of my reading slump right now is The Fury by Alex McAleedis, which I am looking forward to reading. So yeah, that is my um, book stack that I'm traveling with. I also have my Kindle. I'm still reading The Chalk Man on the Kindle and I have a few other arcs on there that I might pick up. So. That's gonna be all the books that I take with me. I thought of taking more books, but honestly, there's just like no time. So yeah, um, that's it. I'm gonna get uh, my work started, and um, I'll update you guys later. If not, see you when I see you. Got myself Deep into your eyes